planet's on fucking fire. Hey everybody, I'm Nikki. This is Backyard Politics. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and the subscribe button. It helps this channel out. Um, I have a little announcement that I wanted to make as far as my participation with the Medicare for All marches. Um, I had been pretty heavily involved, um, so has Maddie, to the point where we were um, putting together a fundraiser for the event. And um, some things came out yesterday that made both of us uneasy and are completely against what I do here on this channel and in my real life. Um, so I put out this um, public statement. It says, I am extremely saddened to announce that due to my own personal activism, beliefs, and the nature of my podcast, I will be taking a step back from the Medicare for All marches. I completely believe that the original organizers that started this movement were completely unaware of what was unfolding in Indiana. That being said, I condemn racism and cannot be, a, be associated with anything that has ever been tied to Nazis, even if it was due to inexperience. I sincerely wish the best of luck to the real activists tied to this movement. Um, I sincerely mean that. I love you, Sharif. You still inspire the fuck out of me. And um, I'm sad to see this happen. I really am. Yesterday was... I wanted to put a video out, but it was really hard. I was having a really hard time with this. This is something that was really close to my heart, and I had, you know, some friends involved, and just as time's gone by, it's unraveled in the, the saddest of ways. I'll just put it that way. Let's listen to this. Um, this is an article from The Intercept. It says, how the far-right Boogaloo movement is trying to hijack anti-racist protests for a race war. Because guess what? The name Boogaloo is a reference to civil war, a.k.a. race war. That's what their whole fucking call is. Those assholes have been downtown Salem, like, fighting against Antifa and with the Proud Boys. So fuck all you guys who support these assholes. I don't care if you're a leftist or who you are. Fuck you, man. It goes on. I will link to this in the description box. But just to highlight a few things. Um, it talks about... These guys who are self-identified members of the so-called Boogaloo movement... Um, perhaps the most dangerous group that until the past week or so, most Americans had never heard of. That's because this is a year old and I have already done a video about this, but we need to all refresh our memories, don't we? So this is why you don't team up with Boogaloo. The complaint filed in Nevada last month described Boogaloo as a term used by extremists to signify coming civil war and or the fall of civilization. According to this person, an expert on domestic extremist groups in American University, members of the Boogaloo movement are all united by the idea that they are fighting against government tyranny and want to launch a violent insurrection against the government and bring about a second civil war. Okay, so here's where I'm at with that. We're against the deep state, right? Duh. However, as Maddie put it last night when we were talking about this, he likes pepperoni pizza. Hitler could have liked pepperoni pizza. Does that mean we should fucking work with him? I thought that was a brilliant point. Like, you know who else is against government? Clive Bundy? Timothy McVeigh? Do you want to team up with them? Um, it goes on to talk about how they wear these stupid Hawaiian shirts, and that way they look less intimidating, is my assumption. Um, says so the Anti-Defamation League, while documenting how white supremacists have adopted the Boogaloo concept, also referred to the Boogaloo movement's casual acceptance of future mass violence as disturbing. Remember, these are heavily armed men 
many of them with military training looking for new and greater opportunities for violent, violent protests. Basically, they're looking for any protests to infiltrate so they can do their business. Okay? It's just like, it's fucking no different than when, like, the Proud Boys send their one, a couple of their guys in Black Block to try to blend in. The same fucking thing. And I don't get how a lot of these uh, leftist podcasters who are, like, pro-boogaloo can understand the fact that there's fascism at the top that we need to fight, but we shouldn't fight it at the bottom, at the ground level. How the fuck do you square that circle? I don't get that. And I don't want to cause, like ill feelings or, you know, any kind of bullshit between the leftists, but god damn it, really, I would love to hear your opinion. How, how do you make that make sense? Um, it says they are there to, they're against coronavirus lockdowns, shelter in place orders, and they go to BLM marches so that they can infiltrate those. Um, not to mention this Magnus guy that keeps popping up. He supports Kyle Rittenhouse. How do you make that make sense? Um, anyway, I will totally, uh, link to this in the description box, like I said, but it's, it also goes on to say in March, Timothy Wilson, a 36-year-old Missouri man with Nazi ties, was shot and killed by the FBI after plotting a bomb to bomb a hospital in Kansas City area on the first day of the lockdown. Wilson had told an undercover FBI agent that he had wanted to create enough chaos to kickstart a revolution and referred to his planned attack as Operation Boogaloo. Um, in April, Aaron Swenson, a 36-year-old Arkansas man, was arrested after he threatened to kill a police officer on a Facebook Live video. I feel like hunting the hunters, he wrote on Facebook, where he also made Boogaloo references. It says the Boogaloo boys don't operate in a vacuum. Their goals, methods, and personal overlap with a number of far-right anti-government groups that also pose a significant threat to law, order, and race relations from the Proud Boys to the Oath Keepers. I've done a, a video, I believe, on the Oath Keepers. They're embedded in fucking L.A. law enforcement. So are the Proud Boys in Oregon. Fucking three percenters, it goes on to say. They're our cops. I have fucking video that went, not my video that went viral, but I have a video of the video that went viral of the cop that throws up the three percent sign downtown Salem, the protest I was at. It says, don't forget the Ku Klux Klan either. The Virginia man arrested for driving his truck into a crowd of Black Lives Matter protesters over the weekend is head of the local KKK chapter. Some of us have been trying to sound the alarm for several years now. In 2015, a survey of law enforcement agencies found the vast majority of respondents ranked quote, the threat of violence from anti-government extremists higher than the threat of from radicalized Muslims, obviously. In February, prior to both the coronavirus lockdowns and the George Floyd protests, Trump's hand-picked FBI director, Christopher Wray, told Congress that the Bureau had raised its assessment of the threat posed by uh, racially motivated violent extremists in the U.S. to a national threat priority and revealed how extremists motivated by racial or religious hatred made up a huge chunk of the FBI's domestic terrorism investigations. Um, yeah, it says... Trump, of course, isn't interested. Yeah, blame Trump. This didn't start with Trump. Come on, you guys. Um, colonialism. Hello? Capitalism. Fucking Christopher Columbus was a genocidal rapist maniac. So, yeah, again, I will link to this, and you guys should take a look at it. So, um, 
Lastly, it says, let's be clear, far-right extremists are hijacking nationwide protests against racism for push for a race war. While the Boogaloo might have elements that are closer to libertarians, 90% of the Boogaloo material is racist. We can expect a lot more violence in the lead up to the 2020 election. I think we should be very concerned about the violent potential of these groups as we've seen unfold. Specifically on this channel, too. So, needless to say, I had to step away. I cannot have myself or my channel linked to that. And um, I, I wish the original organizers well. I hope that they wake up to who Boogaloo really is and that they are the infiltrators and maybe that is why all of this shit unfolded. That being said, I am in the minority of the leftist podcasters for feeling that way, so is what it is. Next, it is 9.40 a.m. here in Salem, Oregon, and it is 95 degrees outside. Climate change is real, folks. Boob sweat season. <laughs> so anyway, um... Willamette Week yesterday tweeted out, and it says, Today our overhead wire was at 120 degrees, and our rail was at 140 degrees, so we had reached our limits. And they're talking about the max service being suspended. So, yesterday it got to, like, 114 or 115. The day before it was 106, I believe. And, yeah, like, right now at 9.40 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, it's 95 fucking degrees outside. It's so hot. Yesterday, I had to give my dogs a bath so they didn't die of heat stroke. I'm not kidding you. They were not moving for two days. This is not normal at all for this area. We have wildfires popping up. Randomly, they had to shut down I-84 the other day for a little while because there were uh, little wildfires popping up over there. There's wildfires in Warm Springs right now. Um, and that's where a lot of reservations are, where our Native American, well, our indigenous friends live. And in fact, um, the Willamette Action Collection, which is um, activist uh, driven, I don't know how to say it, I'm fucking exhausted, <laughs> it's hot, activist ran, okay, Willamette Action Collective, fire season has begun in Oregon, Willamette Action Collective is running emergency supplies to the Warm Springs Reservation this week, support our mutual aid efforts in response to this fire and our preparations for the rest of this fire season, um, and I, tweeted about it and I am retweeting about it right now so it'll be at the top if I can get it to work this fucking thing um so it'll be at the top of my page hopefully if I can get it to work <laughs> there we go anyway um this is not normal for the Pacific Northwest at all there's a heat bubble it's Pacific Northwest heat wave bubble that is over Washington, Oregon, and I think the northern part of California. Um, there's thousands, hundreds of thousands, I believe, without power in Portland as of last night. Um, like I said, the MAX shut down, which is their uh, like electric transit, electric rail transit. Um, in the last six months or so, we have had the worst wildfires we've ever seen. I covered that on this channel. You can go back and watch all the coverage on that. Um, it was so bad that we were in Salem, we were pinned in. There were fires all around. So if it would have jumped the highway, we would have all just burned to death. There was no evacuation plan. Nobody had any plans as to what to do. So now, Citizens have to figure out what the fuck they're going to do because obviously the city officials don't care. They'll just let us die. Proof of that is we have been doing 
a mutual aid, um, free fridge and pantry. I have talked about it on this channel a few times. Uh, we got involved with that because we wanted to feed the unsheltered community and we found um, a couple of ladies in town that had started the free fridge Salem um, community. And so we have a refrigerator and a pantry at the end of our driveway that anybody that's food insecure can come and eat out of. Uh, we've been trying to keep it cold and <laughs> it's been kind of difficult lately with the extremely hot weather. Um, but we have ice water, um, peanut butter and jellies while it's hot out and usually meals every night, things like that. Um, the reason I bring that up is because the local Antifa, if you will, the local activists um, here in Salem and also in Portland, and I'm sure elsewhere in Oregon as well, but those two areas specifically, went around the community and put out cooling centers, which were kiddie pools that were filled with ice water. You could cool off in it. Um, there were coolers with ice and like water bottles and Gatorades and stuff in there. They were all over the city. And then our city officials, they, uh, remember yesterday was 115 fucking degrees. Okay. These people are living outside in this shit. Okay. Even when they can go to like a shelter, they're there to cool down for like 15, 20 minutes and it kicks the fuck out because they have to cycle them through. So city officials went around and disposed of these cooling centers in Salem because they were destroying the property. Their landscape was getting hurt. This is exactly what I've been screaming about forever. These fucking politicians and city officials and government officials of all degrees, every fucking one of them, for the most part, I don't want to throw Sean Salon in there, but like, I can't think of anybody else um, that stands out. They don't, they don't give a shit. They don't care to solve this homeless issue. They care about the, the money they make off the real estate. They don't care about people's lives. These people can very easily die from being exposed to this heat. This heat stroke, man. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. I saw uh, this guy that I follow. He's a Portland activist. He's on Twitter. His name is No Shoe. He uh, raps with his little sound system with no shoes on at the Portland protest. And I think it's so fucking killer. But um, I saw a tweet of his yesterday and he's up in Portland, like I said, and it said that he and some friends were like helping out putting cooling centers together up north. And uh, these Christians ran into them or whatever and were like, oh man, that's so cool. Are you Christians? And no shoe goes, no, man, we're abolitionists. <laughs> Support your local Antifa. They're the ones that are providing the mutual aid so that you don't die. Not just right now, but during the wildfires. I mean, Jesus Christ. It's amazing what a couple of dozen people can do for a community. It really is. Um, so kudos to all those people. Um, they were going around delivering water all over town, making sure that everybody was okay. This isn't their job. They don't get paid for this. It's just the right fucking thing to do. So. Um, lastly, yesterday, Biden bombed Syria and Iraq. And from... Sorry, from what I'm being told from my um, overseas informant is American planes bombarded the sites of the popular mobilization, and, which is the PMF, and killed them on the Syrian-Iraqi border. The sites of the PMF are there to protect the borders from the terrorist ISIS passage. 
So we literally killed people who are fighting against ISIS because why? We funded fucking ISIS. Is he the lesser of two evils? Really? Because up until this morning, I was worried about my friend that lives in Iraq. Because you guys all voted for this fucking dickbag. I didn't. I can say I did not vote for Biden. I will not vote for a warmonger. There is no lesser of two evils. It's all one fucking party. It's just a show and a lot of you play into it. Because you're chicken shit and can't stand up for yourself. Sorry if that hurts to hear it. So, I'm glad that we could catch up today. Um, I'm going to be doing another video here soon covering Portland Police Bureau and what the fuck they have been up to because they're murdering their citizens up there and saying, oh, it's okay, they're white, don't worry about it. These are uh, two men in like two months, I believe it is, or maybe a month ha that have been murdered by Portland Police Bureau for having a mental health crisis. So for the love of God, stop calling the cops to mental health crisis, okay? I know we don't have a lot of uh, resources in a lot of places. My suggestion is if you don't have a system in place to deal with that, call 911 and say, I do not want the cops to show up. This is a medical emergency. That would be my suggestion. Otherwise, in places like Eugene, Oregon, they have um, this thing called cahoots, which we're trying to get implemented here in Salem, but who the fuck knows if that's going to happen. Um, it's where you can call them instead of the cops to deal with mental health crisis and, and uh, unsheltered community issues, things like that. They're trained, medically trained, and uh, their success rate is through the roof. So they don't go around murdering people. PPB shot somebody in the fucking back. One of those guys was shot in the fucking back. Might I remind you, Rudy, who we covered his fucking murder by uh, Salem Police Department, one of the bullets shot him in the back. Don't forget that. We're still waiting for answers, SPD. They have blown the family off four months they're just hoping that it'll go away i'm not forgetting i will keep bringing it up until you answer their fucking questions as to why you murdered the family member so please like share subscribe do all that fun stuff it helps the channel i need to be able to go live from this fucking thing from out there instead of in my basement or in my backyard okay um, I don't want to go live on Twitter. I don't get as many views. People don't see the stuff that's happening until I cover it on YouTube. So please share this far and wide. Help me get subscribers. Um, and exciting news. I am in talks with somebody very special um, that I'm hoping to bring her interview here very soon. Um, I just got to buy her book real quick and read it and then we'll try to get her on the show um and then i'll be able to tell you who it is and the other really exciting news graham elwood is going to be on this show backyard politics on friday so i am stoked about that because the tables have turned and it's gonna be really fun so Excited to hang out with that dude, and uh, if you guys, any of you have any questions you want to ask him ahead of time, Venmo me, and it's at Backyard Politics with an X, and I will try to read your questions online. Until next time, Medicare be with you.